So Ron, I'm glad yeah. we could get you on. <laughs> yeah, it was a struggle. It was about a two hour struggle here. Oh my to get gosh. Lined up. Well, thanks for taking know. the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, Kyle. Thank you. So um, because we're going to be showing this, um, you know, on my Instagram, why don't you, well, first of all, I'd like to say that you were one of the founding members of, of Lightside. You're part of the original group and you were a very um, important member. I think you kind of became a mentor in, in Lightside. So why don't you take a second and just explain um, who you are, where you practice, all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm Ron Hickerson. I've been in practice almost 41 years now, if you can believe that. Boy, that time wow. has passed. Uh, grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Went to the Ohio State University College of Dentistry, which I'm ashamed to say after our football <laughs> going here this past week. But uh, anyway, um, my parents moved to Houston when I was in dental school. So I came back down to Houston or came down to Houston after I graduated from dental school. And my mom just happened to work for a, a dental office in a general dental office. And I kind of hooked up with them and started with them and had four or five partners at one time. And I'm the last man standing now. <laughs> wow. I didn't realize you had that many partners. Yeah, we had three or four uh, different practices at one, or locations at one time. And, wow. Uh, we just kind of, it's all kind of funneled down to two. I guess yep. 2013 was the last one that re retired. And so I'm the last man standing. So, yeah. And I should say that you're one of the only light side members that I've been able to meet um, in person <laughs> because yeah. we started this right after the, um, after the pandemic. And luckily I was able to speak in Houston and you were nice enough to drive me around and take me out to breakfast. And uh, we had a nice little chat. I got to see your office. Yeah, that so, was cool. That yeah, was yeah, that was, a, that was a fun morning. Yeah, it really so, was. So why would someone like you, you know, who's uh, towards the tail end of your career, why would someone like you join a course like Lightside? I'm a slow learner. <laughs> I, <guess>. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think that all along my career, I've had issues with anxiety, uh, feeling accepted um, in my with my colleagues, doing the best work I can possibly do, but always feeling like I fall short, you know, always like that. And I think, um, you know, when the kids, I have two boys, when they were growing up, I'd come home and we'd have sports activities. So I didn't think a whole lot about you know, the day, the schedule. So everything kind of was pretty cool. But now I'm a empty nester with my wife. So now I come home and, you know, we talk a little bit, uh, you know, wife and I, but I always kind of stew a little bit about uh, what goes on during the day and end up kind of getting a lot of anxiety and stress and everything else. Yeah. And, and COVID hit. And I'm like, man, I'm sitting around even more. Um, so <laughs> You know, what am I going to do now? What am I thinking about? What am I doing? So your course kind of came up during that time. Uh, I think Todd Shire, maybe uh, mm -hmm. kind of, um, a periodontist friend I know of yours and mine. And we kind of got together and he said, hey, you might want to try to take this course, you know. So that's what I ended up doing. Always learning yeah. to, I just wanted to learn, even though I've been yeah, I think that lifelong lifelong learning is important in in our profession. You know, you can you can never stop learning, but that can also create uh, some anxiety as well, right? There's yeah. new techniques, there's new materials, there's new technology, and it's just like, and we're measuring in tenths of a millimeter. Yeah. You know, so there's no room for error. And as you and, say, we, we're yeah. working in a donut. Yeah. Heard you say, you know, I say a thing. Cheerio, even a Cheerio, a Cheerio. That's right, yeah. Cheerio, not a not a donut. That's right. I uh, wish it was a donut at times. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> so? In you know, over forty years of practice for you, what were the biggest things that created stress in your daily life? Well, I think my stressors are um, they've changed obviously over the years because. 
I was the young young buck in the in the group, you know. So I was low man on a totem pole. So I was always trying to prove that I prove could do yourself. Uh, yeah, prove myself, and then kind of moved up a little bit, you know, in the, in the ranks as people retired. Um, now I would say my stressors are staff. Um, yeah, that's a biggie. Uh, trying to do all the work that I need to do and still see quite a few hygiene patients along with that. Um, uh, also just trying to really relax myself when I get home and not have all those pent up thoughts about the day. You know, those are, those are stressors for me. That separation <laughs> between the office and home, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you yeah. know, the course that really helps me out with, with that trying to, get my priorities straight and, and also, you know, really understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, the purpose, you know, for my life is not that I'm a dentist. It's that, you know, I'm a family guy and I love the Lord and, you know, I want to do everything to, to glorify the Lord. You know, that's, that's kind of my purpose. Yeah. So been, yeah I love that. Well, I love to hear that, that because yeah. We've had this conversation, you know, you and I have had this conversation before and we've had it with, with the other lightsiders. For you, I think you were one of the ones that once you realized there was a separation between profession and purpose, you knew right away. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of people that um, were struggling or maybe even still struggling with where, where their purpose is, you know. And it was so nice to hear from you, like, this is it for me. You know, for yeah, you I, as a Christian, you knew exactly what it was. Yeah, I'm a PK. I'm a preacher's yeah. kid. So I've kind of always <laughs> had that, you know, that sense in my life. Um, you know, of course, that's kind of wavered in and out, you know, through my, through my life, just like sure. everything sure. else does. But, you know, really digging deep into myself and saying that is my purpose. You know, that that's my purpose in life. Yeah, so such that, an important was, step in separating. Uh, practice from home life is is finding that purpose another thing that you said that i really um i really recognize when, when i practice is fragmented thinking going back to what you're saying about hygiene right you're yeah. in the middle of this this restorative procedure let's say and you know you're trying to get this perfect impression and there's a little bit of blood and you're on your second impression and then your assistant comes over your hygienist comes over and says doctor, I'm ready for uh, yeah. a hygiene check. Yeah. And they're like, uh, uh, well, yeah. and she's going or he's going, you know, well, I've got five yeah. minutes left and I got to get the next one in. So, and it's just this fragmented, you're getting pulled here and here and here. And then you go back and your wife texts you, oh, can you pick this up on the way back? And, you know, I feel like so many times as dentists, especially as practice owners, we are wearing so many hats and we're wearing them all at the same time. Yeah. Right. We're like going hygiene and restorative and surgical and ordering and payroll and family and you know, and yeah. that can be hard. Man, it's it's it can be horrible. And then you add on that all the my computer doesn't work. <laughs> you know, my 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 X-ray is not working. Well, have you rebooted the computer? I always tell you to reboot. No, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. They come back to you. Oh yeah, that worked. You know, it's like yeah, yeah I told you that, like twenty times. You know, to to do that. So there's just your whole day is just an emotional roller coaster. You know, ride at times, and you're distracted yeah. so much, and it's hard to hard to get things done. So trying to focus is a is an issue, and has always has been an issue. What do you think for you? And maybe you already mentioned it. Was the the biggest lesson learned in the course and by by our community? Yeah, I think uh, there's a number of things probably. And one one thing I've kind of been sorting through even thinking past the course. So I'll bring that up first. And and that is, you know, in life, we don't control everything. Um, you know, like we don't control who we were born to, mm -hmm. who our parents are, what our genetics are, how much sand there is on the beach or how much salt there is in the ocean. But one thing I found out that I can control is what I think about. What I think about, I can control that. I'm kind of the, uh, for lack of better sayings, kind of the air traffic controller of my thoughts. I can decide what thoughts land 
and what I think about and what thoughts I don't want to think about. So what I'm trying to do since the course is kind of prioritize my thinking. And I think one of the things and I'll read a little bit, I don't want to get real religious here, but Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. So that's a message to me. I can think about these things that are pure and true and things. I don't have to think about, you know, what somebody thinks about me or, you know, whether they're on the phone complaining about something else. Yes, I've got to deal with that. Sure. But my thoughts need to be positive thoughts. I, you know, I can either, you know, cause myself to be anxious all day and, you know, be in stress all day, or I can be positive and motivational. And also, you know, I can feel that in my team. When I'm, when I'm positive and have a good outlook on the day, they do too. If I'm yeah. down, then they're down too, and they're not going to want to work. So that was one, one big thing that I've really been working on since I've taken the course. And you've kind of led me in that, you know, all the modules have led me to think that, uh, you know, that really concentrate on thinking positive things rather than worrying about everything underneath the sun losing sleep, you know, being anxious when I'm at home, not talking to my wife because I'm worried about stuff at the house. So yeah, that, yeah, that, was, that was me. Exactly. I would be, you know, laying next to my beautiful wife and I'm like sitting thinking about, Oh no, he's coming in tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, I don't think the lab's ready and we don't have the components yeah. or, and you know, yeah. he can't open very wide. And just, yeah. And you know, I just wasn't, I wasn't present. And gosh, it really affected my relationships. Yeah, that's that's a real problem, you know. Uh, you know, we we get as dentists, we get so focused on our business and our work and everything else, and it's sometimes hard to separate. But we that. love it's dentistry fun. so much, and it's like yeah. it's almost to a fault, you know. We yeah, it is. I think it is to a fault. It is. We're us dentists. We just. We love, you know, having a better prep and we love getting together with dentists and talking about dentistry and we're so passionate about it. And I think the problem is that it leads us into this, this arena where our profession becomes our purpose. And I think that's where we have problems. So it's so nice to hear from you that you know this, you know that these are separate. You've been able to separate them. And even so late in your career, yeah, because it's hard to change anything, you know, the longer, the older you are, the more you've been doing something, right? So for you like to I come said, in and make some learner. of these changes, yeah. yeah. I'm a slow learner, you know, so I'll, right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's a process. I'm getting there, but, you know, I'm working through it. So that's, that's the big thing. And for you, how important do you think it is for dentists to have a community like this where where you can talk openly or where you can share your struggles and hear other people's struggles. I mean, was this something that would have benefited you earlier in your career? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, it's always, you know, mental health has always been a taboo in dentistry. Everybody's afraid to talk about it, afraid they're going to make them look little instead of being strong and the mm -hmm. macho dentist, you know? So yeah, if I had this early on, it would have been, it would have been awesome. And my hat goes off to you for, you know, bringing these things up because I hated to see the course end, you know, yeah. because, you know, it was, it was so good and the community was good. You know, we had people from all over the world, uh, you know, and so in different stages too, even your dad, you know, your dad was awesome. You know, he was on a lot too and had a lot of wise things to say as well. Um, so, yeah, I've got a lot of good feedback about my dad. People love my dad. <laughs> yeah, your dad is cool. You know, you're, yeah, you're lucky cool to have the dad. Yeah, he's he's really on the ball still. You know, he's he's right there. I can really tell he cares about you and you know your family and <clears throat> his family, etc. So, oh yeah, I'm yeah. really lucky to to have a nice family. And I got to bring my dad next time I come out to Houston so that you guys can hang out. Right? Cool. We got to get everybody together. Uh, the community is awesome. You know, I mean, I I think not only 
an internet community kind of like we're having because of the pandemic, but also a local community. Um, you know, we have a, I'm involved in a SPEAR study club, also a DSD study club. So having, you know, local people too that you can talk to and bring up certain things is really awesome. This is the first time I've really practiced by myself, you know, in, in years. And I think that may be one of the things that led me to it too. I was feeling like I was on an island somewhere. All of a sudden, yeah. out of nowhere, I had people that I could talk to every day. <clears throat> excuse me about things but you know this really really helped yeah that's that's a great topic that you bring up is the isolation you know this is something we go we, we talk about in the course too but over 50 percent of dentists in the u.s are still practicing solo and the good thing is that the trend is going towards more group practices and i think not only from a treatment planning standpoint you know having people to throw your ideas off of and having multi-specialty, but also just having another human at the same education level, at the same stress level, you know, at the same debt level as you, someone that can understand you on some of these difficult times, because I've said this before, is that, you know, even my wife didn't really understand what I went through on a daily basis, you know, and she understands our finances and stuff, but she doesn't understand what it's like to be in the trenches of dentistry. And so it took me going out of my let's say, immediate home life, going to, luckily I had my dad and my brother who are dentists and talking about this stuff and they immediately got it. And that's what I always saw was as soon as you start talking to other colleagues, as soon as you have some type of a community and you guys are lucky in Houston to have that, that great community with Todd, um, people understand you. You feel like you're part of something. You feel like you can be honest and open. And that can make such a difference in how you feel and your outlook on, on our profession and just daily life of going in to see patients. Yeah, it's, it's vitally important to have a community. If you don't, you're going to get lost and going to get depressed, going to get deeper and deeper into, you know, really bad emotional and, and mental health. You've got to have that support there. And like you said, you know, I love my wife. You know, and we've been married for 38 years now, but she awesome. you know, doesn't she doesn't understand, you know, all that I go through every day, whereas colleagues do, you know, they can relate to this. So, you know, that that's extremely important. Yeah. So what advice would you have for any dental colleague that's having anxiety or depression or stress? What would be your advice to them? Well, I would say get involved in a community, get involved in, in your program and the mod modules are laid out beautifully, but you have to do the work too. You know, it's not, it's not like just reading it, you know, you, you've got to get, you got to soul search a little bit through everything. So yeah, I would say don't sign up if you're not going to do that. That's you know, right. You gotta be, you gotta be involved. You got to be committed the whole time and it'll pay dividends, but you know, I've recommended it to colleagues that I don't think have any mental health at all, issues at all. I think it's beneficial for everybody, you know, because it can, can prevent you from going into a mental, you know, depression and health and things like that. So it's not just people that currently have a problem. It's for all dentists, you know, and that's what's so awesome about this course, you know. Thanks. Yeah, you bring up two really good points. One is doing the work, right? Uh, signing up for the course is not gonna make you better, right? When I, when we, when I talked to Kim yesterday, you know, I, I know with Kim, because we talked uh, a lot, she did every module, she watched every video, she was at every live, she did all the action tasks, and you can see how it changed her. I mean, she had such a big change in her, her outlook and how she treatment plans, how she talks to patients and the openness and um right she and, did i watched it yesterday too she even looks different you know i know when she came on it was like she had like a bubbly kind of personality and yeah didn't start out that way i can promise you that you know so yeah, yeah. no for sure and then the other thing that that i love that you said is this isn't just a course for people going through stress my whole goal is I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. You know, I want them to learn from my mistakes so they don't make the same mistakes. 
I, that's why I especially want people who haven't gone through a hard time and are looking at me like, this is crazy. And that's why we did CE credits is to almost like trick people into getting in here, right? Oh, I'll just come in for the CE. And then they get in and realize like, oh, wow, there's some things I could really change or else I might be, I may end up where Kyle was, or I may end up, you know, where Ron was or, or where, any, where any of us were, which is, you know, having anxiety or depression or having dark times. So, you know, my goal when I started this whole mental health journey for dentistry was start teaching students about this, start teaching dental students, and then, you know, then go to young grads and then but I don't want somebody to go through this and then have to find an outlook. Of course, I'll be there for them if they're there. But again, I, I would love to just have all these statistics that we have go away. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I hear of suicides even in Houston, you know, quite a bit. We had somebody a couple of years ago that hung himself in his office, you know, I mean, just it's horrible you know had a young family and everything else and just it's just it's scary you know it really is that somebody would get that depressed I mean uh, god willing I never get there you know um, but I'm sure that it's, it's there so it's scary yeah yeah you look at the people there were there were a few dentists that that I know of because people sent it to me that committed suicide during the pandemic and you look at them and they're young and they have great practices and they're well respected and they have beautiful families and some of them are specialists and you look at these people and say like they have everything and what they didn't have was was their mental health and i think i say this all the time but i i'm putting out these videos and these courses as a way to like put me as an example to talk about it use me to bring it up to somebody else. Hey, I saw this crazy guy from California and he was saying all this stuff. You know, I'm kind of feeling the same way. Uh, you know, have you ever felt this way? Just so that the conversations can happen and they don't have to happen in my course. You know, they can happen anywhere. I, I want them to start happening over text and friends or colleagues to, to talk to each other. And if you work in a medical building and your neighbor, you feel like, you know, isn't doing great or stop saying hi to you or stop showing up that you check on them because I don't want to hear about any more of our colleagues feeling like they have no way out. I think that's awesome the way you, I mean, you brought that up really from day one about your issues and how you had to refund some patients and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that really set the table for everybody else to be, to be open, you know, and uh, being vulnerable is, is really difficult, you know, for, especially for, yeah the macho dentist, you know, the doctor, you know, to, to really be able to open up and say, yeah, you know, you know what, I've got problems and my problems are probably worse than your problems are, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That's well, awesome. even, even in our, even in our first light side course, right at the very beginning, people were telling their story yeah. and you start looking at yourself saying, gosh, I thought my problems were so big, you know, he or she is, going through this and this and this and I was dwelling on this oh my gosh I've got it so good yeah exactly and that's that's what's awesome about you know the light side community you know as we can be vulnerable we can talk about our problems and you know and and understand that hey maybe I'm not so bad you know or maybe I'm even worse you know I don't know right. but you know, that's really awesome to be able to do that so yeah, uh, I, I need to know who does your hair, Kyle. That's <laughs> this is my wife. My wife's been begging me for years, first to shave my head and then to bleach it. And it took a global pandemic for me to say yes. So, uh, yeah, I need I needed a crazy change. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I, maybe I need to do that. I, yeah, I next time I come to Houston, we're shaving your head and we're bleaching it. Hey, at least uh, you know for forty one years, I don't have a whole lot of white hair, so. Pretty that's amazing, not, yeah. I've got some hair growing back or losing hair on the sides here and on the top. Not too yeah, bad. That's, that's pretty good. Well, Ron, um, this has been great. Yeah, I awesome. feel so lucky to to know you as a friend and um, you know, to have another friend in Houston. Yeah. And thanks for sharing your insight. It was so great to have someone who's been practicing for four decades in the course 
because you have so much knowledge on both the clinical side and the staff management and you know everything that we talked about when I was there in, in Houston. So thanks for being so open and honest and, and brave for coming on here and talking about this. There are gonna be other people that are gonna see this video and that are gonna be you know, practicing three, four decades and say, oh, I thought it was only the young guys or the young gals that were going through this. I didn't realize that you know, there were other people like me. So you're really gonna help people by doing this and, and being public with this. So I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, and- uh, Anytime, you know, anytime, my man. Yeah. Thanks. I hope to see you soon and talk to you soon. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Tom. All right, thanks, Ron. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.